when we really look at it, we've, we've entitled this symposium, Anosmia, A Sense of Hope. And so far, we really haven't given you much in terms of hope for the future and hope for the recovery in patients who have lost their sense of smell. So actually, I'm going to ask Mira to speak to this and some of the very exciting research that we're pursuing here at Jefferson and Monell using stem cells to recover some of the sense of smell. Thank you. So just to give you a very brief background about what stem cells are. So what defines a cell as a stem cell? Uh, very important characteristics, two of those. The first one is the ability of a stem cell to make more of themselves, so their ability to replenish themselves. And the second characteristic being their ability to generate a different type of cell. So in research, um, every time I get asked this question, so you work on stem cells, that must be a very ethical thing you're going through. So actually, stem cells that we use are, are adult stem cells, and there's also embryonic stem cells. So these are the main uh, types of stem cells that people use in research. The embryonic stem cells, as the name implies, is obtained from an embryo. And these are pluripotent, meaning that they can generate different organs as well as tissues. And the main purpose of embryonic stem cells is for the fetus to develop. The second type that we study is adult stem cells. And adult stem cells are very restricted in the areas that they're found. So examples like bone marrow is very high in stem cells, and also skin, hair, uh, all these places have stem cells. The main purpose of adult stem cells is to help, sorry, help when we have any sort of injury. So if you want to recover from sort of injury, for instance, if you have scarring or if you have some injury on your skin, that's when the stem cells come into picture and uh, help that wound heal. Um, now, olfactory epithelium, uh, which we've spoken about quite a bit, um, also has stem cells. Now, the way olfactory epithelium is organized, I know Beverly's gone over it. Um, so basically, olfactory epithelium has, uh, is laminar, so it has an apical part and a basal part to it. The basal part comprises of the stem cells, which are orange ones here. And then these stem cells differentiate into these olfactory neurons. The neurons are the ones that are detecting odors. There's also support cells in the olfactory uh, epithelium. So every time there is any sort of odorant around in the nasal passage, it's specific neurons that are excited because of these odors. So that's what distinguishes if we're smelling coffee versus vanilla or strawberry, because only a subset of neurons get activated. So we know that the olfactory epithelium constantly regenerates. So every 60 days or so, uh, these neurons die, and the stem cells and the progenitor cells uh, replenish uh, the lost neurons. So how can we take this and try to uh, do something in vitro? So basically, uh, how can we replicate this in a culture, in a petri dish? So what we have done is we have uh, established collaboration with Dr. Pribikin here, and we've been getting uh, biopsy tissues from patients. So the idea is that we want to isolate these olfactory stem cells from um, individuals who are healthy. We want to grow them in, in a petri dish. We want to identify factors that can generate olfactory neurons from these stem cells. The idea being that if we can replicate this in a culture, we can eventually transplant these into the nose of an anosmic person who's probably lost a lot of tissue and uh, hope to regain their lost sense of smell. So this is the overall goal for the project. Uh, where we are right now is we have been um, obtaining biopsy tissues from Dr. Prebikin, and we grow them into these olfactory um, neurosphere cultures. So basically what you see here, here is usually they're like balls and uh, spheres. They have these stem cells in the center, and they have mature differentiated cells uh, around the stem cells. The idea being that they're trying to replicate what you see in a tissue where the stem cells are usually protected from damage. Um, so we have been growing these uh, spheres from different patients. And what you see here is that this left video, I don't know if you can click on it, Yeah. So this is from a, a patient who was undergoing a surgery for, I think it was DCR, and this was a 75-year-old male. You can see that this guy here is very happy. He has this beating cilia, and that's propelling these cultures to move in the culture condition, whereas this one here is pretty 
uh, quiet and are not interested in moving around. So basically this one has these beating cilia on it and that's probably respiratory tissue right there uh, because of the ciliated cells. But this one looks more like an olfactory uh, derived tissue. Whereas this one here is from a 35 year old female and she has a history of smoking. But there's no ciliated cells here uh, that could be due to her smoking status. Uh, also, these could be olfactory cells. So moving forward, what we do know is that the tissues that we're getting do provide us with some kind of olfactory uh, cells. And our strategy is to enrich these olfactory cultures and hopefully identify, identify factors that will enable us to differentiate this, them into functional neurons. So with that... This is very, very exciting research. I mean, the truth is that for those of us who have worked in the field of smell research over the last two decades, there have been very, very few successes in terms of trying to manipulate the sense of smell for recovery. This actually provides us with two different avenues for success. One is to determine what are the factors that are actually relevant for the regeneration of the olfactory epithelium. If you can identify the factors that are required for the regeneration or growth of olfactory epithelium, then perhaps you can actually manipulate the environment in an individual's nose to help to regenerate those structures. The other is obviously the actual possibility of a olfactory transplant of some type, or an implant, I should say, where we take stem cells, we culture them, we grow the olfactory neurons or progenitor cells, and then actually introduce them back into an individual's nose so that they can recover their sense of smell. And this is really where we, I think, are headed in the future, is to look specifically at these kinds of biological manipulations, whether they be outside of the body or within the body, in order to restore the sense of smell. And that's really where the theme of a sense of hope comes from. That's really what we're hoping to do with this program and with our movement during the Anosmia Awareness Day to let people know about the research that's being done and to let folks know that really, for the first time, we really have an avenue for potential success in restoring the sense of smell. So I want to thank our panelists, and we will take some questions. <laughs>